Hello everyone and welcome to Sutton's Days. Today we're going to talk about this rare phenomena. It's not as rare as you would think, but it does happen and the first time it happens to you, it will freak you right out. You will be like, oh no, no, no. What did I do wrong? Do I have to throw out all my food? Oh my gosh, what happened? Now, here's the thing. It's called pinholing, okay? And it is when you get these little corroded pinhole looking, maybe sometimes not so little. Let's look at the pictures. We've got this one and that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. I'm sure there's more. But I, I have been um, contacted by a friend recently who had this happen, and then it came up in our Facebook group again, and I thought, you know what? I haven't done a video on this, and so we need to get the word out on this. Yes, we do. It is called pinholing, a.k.a. pitting, okay? And it's the appearance of small holes or corroded areas on the underside of the metal lid. So you've canned everything, right? You put the lid on, you, you do your processing, and then when you look at the underside of the lids, if you ever do, then you'll notice, what is that black stuff? Now, the most common reaction that people come up with is, is this mold? Did I just ruin all my food? I get it. The first time I saw it, I was like, wow, what happened here, right? Now, in my experience, this happens most frequently with potatoes or meat, and specifically with russet potatoes. Um, I don't recall it ever happening to me with any other kind of potato, but... It happens, okay? And when um, I went to read up a little bit more on it, apparently it also happens a lot with salmon and with rhubarb. And it's just something that occurs, okay? Meat in particular, I've seen it happen with a lot. Everything from chicken to fish to pork, it, you know, beef, it happens. So let's take a look at this and we'll talk a little bit about it, okay? So what causes it? It doesn't mean that the food in the jar is is not good. It, it does not affect the safety of it at all. In fact, it's actually a compound caused by the food in the jar sometimes. So it's, it's a natural occurrence, as bizarre as that sounds. But sometimes it also has to do with the handling of the lid or your headspace. Remember, headspace is important, okay? In fact, the food in the jar will still be safe unless the holes have gone clean through the entire lid, right? If you can look through that lid, there's a problem. Then the food's not good. So it's just that underside coating of the enamel. Um, it's a staining that occurs, okay? Now, Elizabeth Andrus from the National Center of Home Food Preservation, she is truly the queen of canning, okay? Um, points out that a similar occurrence is staining on the underside of the lid. And she says that a small amount of staining may be acceptable, particularly in tomatoes, berries, and other highly colored foods. So that can happen. Um, these stains should be completely on the surface of the enamel and not signs of something actually eating away the enamel. Now, for reference, okay, I have seen most of this happen with ball lids. I have also seen it happen with pure lids, and I've seen it once or twice with four jar lids, okay? So it's it's not a lid-specific thing. It is a food-specific thing, and it's still not totally a food-specific thing because it doesn't happen every single time, right? The black deposits on the underside of the lid are not a sign of spoilage, says the University of Minnesota or Missouri Extension. Um, brown or black spots on the underside of the metal lids, they're harmless, okay? The food may be eaten as long as there are no signs of spoilage evident. So, again, as long as the, the pin, the hole, you know, as long as it doesn't create an actual hole through the lid, you are good to go. If very acidic foods like pickles or fermented products or some juices, right, uh, were kept for a long time, the acid may have eaten away at the enamel on the underside of the lid, resulting in pinholes that allow microorganisms to get into the jar. So if it's something like that where it's been sitting there for a long time, that's not something you wanna mess with, okay? That is that is something that's not safe. But if it's something that you canned in July and it's now November and they're your potatoes, potatoes are not acidic, meat is not acidic, okay? Then it's something to go, okay, you know, it, it happens. But if it is an acidic food like tomatoes or fruits or juices, then 
you want to pay really close attention to it, okay? Any deposits that do not match the food in the jar that appear to be building up on the surface of the enamel or that trail from the from the lid, okay, onto the food surface. Um, and I'll show you a picture here. Did you see that? Okay. So that's it's the same thing happening. It's the same exact thing happening. So again, it does not indicate spoilage. It does not mean that it's not good. Um, I've also seen this happen with beans. So it can happen with beans also, okay? I'm thinking pretty much it can happen with just about everything. Now, one of the things that I was reading on one of the ex extension websites was that um, if it's if the headspace is improper, okay? So if you're canning something with an improper headspace where the food is too close to that lid, then that can actually cause that also. Headspace is super important. That is the part of the equation that they factored in when they decided how much time it takes to, one, vacate all of the air out of the jar, right? And then bring it to the temperature necessary. So if your headspace is too high, then that equation is off and it can also bring the food up and, and hit that lid like that and that can cause pinholing also. So I'm going to show you all of the pictures individually one by one at the end of this video so that you can have a closer look at it. It can freak you out, but take a deep breath. You don't need to freak out about this. It is normal. It is, well, you know, it's normal. It doesn't happen every single time, but it happens. So it's perfectly safe. You don't have to throw out all your food. Um, you know, you are good to go. It's not mold. It is not mold because mold is a completely different animal and you will know when it's mold because the jar won't be sealed. Mold cannot be created inside that jar with that vacuum. So that is why safe canning is so important. That's why headspace is so important, right? So if you run across this, then you want to make sure that you don't go, don't, don't freak out. Don't freak out. Take a deep breath you've got this. It happens to everyone at some point or another. I'm sure somebody's going to put it in the comments that it's never happened to them. Lucky. Cool. Okay. But we get a lot of people that it has happened to. And I mean, there's people that have been canning for years and they've never had it happen. And then one day it does. And it's like, oh, what did I do wrong? You didn't do anything wrong. Our food today is changing. Okay. I've said this umpteen times. This is why the new updated canning procedures and policies are in place because our foods have changed drastically over the last decades. The soil that they are grown in, the food itself has been, you know, messed with so that it's not, it's not a, what do they call it? A heritage. It's a hybrid. Okay. So it can do this and do that and do this and do that and not succumb to this and that. And well, things act differently when you do that. And part of that's our food. So it's just another step in the food preserving process. It's another thing to learn during your canning process. It's all good. You are safe and you are good as long as that jar is sealed, okay? So it's, if it's sealed and you processed it for the correct time, temperature, all of that stuff, then you're good to go. Work the process. Trust the process. You've got this. So now you know what pinholing is. If you had it happen to you, throw it in the comments section down below. Let's all chat about it. Until next time, everybody, be safe.